Welcome to Panacone. May I interest you in some dreams? Do you want to escape your mundane life? Well, in Panacone you can leave all your worries behind and focus on what's truly important. You. Inside Panacone's dreamscape you can do anything. Well, not, not really anything, but, but you get the idea. Everybody here is living a wonderful life. Except for the locals, they have a terrible life. Anyway, our selection of dreams is unparalleled. You can take a stroll on the streets of the golden hour and bathe in the luxury of Panacone's finest. Or visit the moment of morning dew for a more relaxed atmosphere. If you like a more festive mood, the taverns in the moment of scorched sand are waiting for you. Or you can go shopping in the moment of dusk. So, what are you waiting for? Your happiest dreams are just around the corner. Uh, what's happening? Uh, sorry, <laughs> please ignore that. Some nightmarish creatures may pop up from time to time, but you don't have to worry about that. It's not like you can die inside a dream. What? S spiritual death? What's that? Panacone used to be a desolated world covered in deserts. What? Oh, it's deserts, not deserts. Okay, sorry. The planet was a prison belonging to the IPC where exiled prisoners were sent to mend the leaks of Memoria. Memoria is this strange thing that seeps out of the memory zone and it's the main building block for Panacone's dreamscape. Eventually, the IPC lost control over Panacone when a Stellaron crisis broke out and the residents took refugee under Shippe the Harmony, becoming members of the family. At some point before Panacone came under the rule of the family, the Nameless, Mask Fools and even the Omen Vanguards, who are followers of Terminus, assisted Panacone in gaining its independence. We also know that three members from the Astral Express chose to remain on Panacone at that time. Kiernan, Legwork and Rosalina, who were the guard mechanic and surveyor of the Express. Today, under the watchful gaze of the family, Panacone is known as the planet of festivities, inviting people from all over the universe to experience blissful dreams. The planet changed from an unforgiving desert, a oh, f**k, uh, desert, to a megastructure brimming with modern cities. At least, that's how it looks. We know very little about the real life Panacone, besides the reverie, we didn't visit any other places, and most of the text only talks about the dreamscape, so I don't know. In order to understand the family, we need to understand their eon. Shippe the Harmony is an amalgamation of thousands of entities that preaches the joy of human harmony and unity. And while on paper the idea of harmony doesn't sound too bad, when you look at the family you quickly get this weird cultish vibe where individuals are robbed of their individuality and indoctrinated into a creepy hive mind of lunatics. If you read through the memory bubble family, you you can see the experience of a man who was invited by the family to watch an opera, during which everybody in the theater started gazing at him and talking in unison, trying to convince him to join the family. And while the family in Panacone seems kinda normal, emphasis on kinda, there is definitely more to them than meets the eye. The family is a gathering of beings from different worlds blessed by Shippe. It's a little bit hard for me to describe them, because every text about them that we have only talks about how there is no conflict among them and how all they do is sing Shippe's praise and spread the cult, I mean the words of the harmony. Until we arrived at Panacone, we didn't really know much about them. The family on Panacone is divided into five lineages, which is kinda ironic. First is the Oak family. They are the leaders of the five families. The Oak family is in charge of political organization and management within the dreamscape. 
Next is the alfalfa family who are in charge of economics. They are a group of hardworking and flexible people who run the markets of Panacone. The bloodhound family are our sandbags, I mean they are in charge of the security on Panacone. All matters relating to policing and military action are conducted by them. Oh by the way, their mascot is Hanu, which already gives them bonus points in my book. The fourth family is the Iris family. They are the faces of Panacone, in charge of receiving guests and giving performances. Firefly is supposedly, uh, I'm sorry, Firefly was supposedly part of the Iris family. Last are the Nightingale family. Their job is to manage technology and employ dream architects to further develop the dreamscape. Besides the five lineages, Panacone is also home to many races. The Halovians are a species characterized by their angelic traits, such as halos and white wings emerging from the back of their heads. They are shrewd and mysterious, envied by the other races for their immense charisma. Some members of this race are Sunday and Rabbit. The Pepeshi people are a race that everybody who doesn't like reading lore thinks that are just children with a mustache. They are in fact a race of short humans. The easiest way to distinguish them from normal children is the fluff balls extruding from their heads. The Papeshi are a species indigenous to Panacone and they are smart and passionate about knowledge and gathering riches. Next are the Intellitrons, intelligent inorganic life forms that were once denizens of Rupert I's former machine empire. They are interested in organic culture and travel to various worlds to deepen their understanding. While being machines, they can also enter the dreamscape, suggesting that they may have souls like any other living beings. Panacone also houses many regular humans, but humans are boring, so I'm gonna move on. Dreams are something that we all experience in our day-to-day -day lives. However, even if there are techniques that can allow us to have a small degree of control over them, we can never control the full narrative of a dream. Panacone introduces a dreamscape where the dreamer has full control over their actions. Sure, it's not your traditional dream where you imagine something and poof, it appears. But there are people who can shape the dreamscape called dream weavers or dream architects. To understand the dreamscape, we first need to understand Panacone's location. Panacone is located in a star system brimming with memoria leaking from the memory zone. The memory zone is a space where things can take shape based on different types of cognition. For example, the monster we fight during the story quest, Something Unto Death, is an entity imbued with a specific cognition accumulated from fragments of subconsciousness in the memory zone. For those of you who have played Honkai Impact 3rd, which is most of my audience, the concept is similar to Stigma Spaces or even the Sea of Quanta to an extent. Panacone's dreamscape is divided into 12 moments. Moment of Daybreak, Moment of Soul, Moment of Scorch Sand, Moment of Oasis, Moment of Dusk, Moment of Blue Hour, Moment of Serenity, Moment of Golden Hour, The Moment of Subscribe and Smash that Like button for more Honkai content, Moment of Stars, Moment of Morning Dew, and Moment of Glided Hour, with each moment offering a different experience. And since I just talked about stigma spaces in Honkai Impact 3rd, if you played the other Hoyovers games, you know very well that the concept of dreams is not new for them. In Honkai Impact 3rd, the stigma space is a space that encapsulates the collective memory of a person, event or even an entire family lineage. Basically it's a space shaped after human cognition. One of the playable characters in Honkai Impact 3rd, Mistelin Shariak, is the manifestation of an entire bloodlines lineage subconscious collective called an idea. And just like the name suggests, ideas are a species born from, well, human ideas. And funnily enough, Mistelin's better suit name is Dreamweaver. Speaking of dreams, one question that many of us have is, are Firefly and Robin truly dead? Well, under normal circumstances, if someone is killed inside a dream, they'll just wake up in reality. The family use sheep as power to protect the people in the dreamscape. 
But the harmonist protection doesn't seem to apply to people killed by something unto death, which is the literal embodiment of death inside the dreamscape. They are a calamity whose victims are said to suffer spiritual death. The concept of spiritual death has two general meanings. One is the separation from God because of sin, which causes the death of the soul on a conceptual level, and the second meaning is the actual death of the soul or consciousness. This implies that the people who are killed by something unto death also die in reality because while their physical body is still fine, their consciousness is gone. Now, does this mean that Firefly and Robin are gone forever? I don't know. It seems so, but I have played through enough of Shaoji's stories to know that he likes to bait people with fake deaths in the early parts of the story. Look, if you played Honkai Impact Third, you know. While the first part of the story serves as a setup, I am excited to see where the story goes from here. I feel like the cast of characters we have right now blends together very well and the fact that we cannot trust anybody is very intriguing.